Imposter syndrome is a concept describing high achieving individuals who are marked by an inability to internalize their accomplishments and a persistent fear of being exposed as a fraud. I wonder if people will take me seriously wearing this mustache. Hey everyone, welcome back to Amy Codes, and today I'll be talking about imposter syndrome. Um, I wanted to emphasize that this is more about my own personal experience with imposter syndrome rather than you know covering the entire topic of imposter syndrome itself. Um, and also more specifically, it's my experience with imposter syndrome while being a woman in technology. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Uh, I So how did I get into computer science? Uh, right, I actually got into computer science sophomore year of college. Freshman year, I majored in uh, cellular biology and neuroscience um, because prior to that, I actually wanted to be, go down the pre-med path, become a doctor, medical school, all of that. Uh, for freshman year, I realized that this was not a path that I wanted to actually pursue. Like I had this idea of what you know becoming a doctor would be like, and my classes were not that interesting to me. So sophomore year, I actually took my first computer intro to computer science class, and it was amazing. I loved it so much, and I did really well in it. Um, and during that time, I was also taking, you know, organic chemistry, fundamental cellular, uh, cellular biology, neuroscience, all of that, um, because this was still my uh, first semester of sophomore year, and uh, which the following semester I then like fully converted to computer science. Anyways, during that first semester of sophomore year, I also then joined the uh, computer science cl clubs in my college just to get a better idea of what computer science is about and also so that I could make friends among uh, the CS people uh, and also to hopefully you know get help to progress through this major. I think that this was definitely an interesting experience in the sense that this is the first time I had ever um, like where the majority of my friend group was guys prior to this a freshman year of college um, and in high school all of my friends were women um, and they all happened to be very high performing women and you were doing amazing things and I still had that friend group but whenever I did CS things obviously I would uh, like contact this group for help. I also got involved in organizing a hackathon uh, and I was one of four people to uh, lead this effort. I think this was where the imposter syndrome stemmed from because I, they would make, uh, let's just call them interesting comments when certain things would happen, which I'll definitely go into that I had never heard before or knew how to deal with or even had a label um, to like pinpoint what it was. So, some of the comments from my co-organizers were things like, so there's this one woman in the hackathon community who I admire very much, and one comment one of my peers made was, oh, she's just getting all the attention because she's a woman. Um, I was often called condescending, which every instance that that had happened, I felt like my intonation was very clear and not in any way trying to portray a sense of like higher than thou kind of thing. Um, towards when we, you know, finished the hackathon and we were doing a postmortem, I also didn't get credit for a lot of the work I did. Um, and when I tried to claim that I did these things, um, my co-organizers like outrightly just said like just didn't give me credit for this. Um, so during this semester, like through all the highs and lows, I felt like I couldn't go to my peers in college, in this, um, in my college computer science community. So instead what I did was, I knew that I wanted to stick through this major and I needed peers for help. 
So I created an online community uh, for women in technology to make other internet friends. Um, and it was sort of an effort to like keep my own sanity, to, like, to be able to relay similar experiences with other peers. And honestly, I attribute that group to sticking through my entire major. Anyways, after I started that community, again, one of my co-organizers said that um, they didn't understand why I started this group because I hadn't even had my first professional programming experience yet, um, so I therefore wasn't qualified to run this group. Um, and that I didn't truly understand what it was like being in technology. Um, again, like all of these comments just sort of like undermine my confidence and belief in my ability to get through this major. Among other things that contributed to just this feeling of being overwhelmed and unqualified, um, for one of for my second semester, uh, sophomore year of college, I actually started my performance just like totally dropped. Like I failed all my classes. I felt like I couldn't do any of this major, um, and. Like, and I'll talk about other uh, components that went into this this terrible semester, but I would say 50% of it was due to imposter syndrome. Um, so then the semester after that, so first semester of junior year of college, I knew something was wrong. So I couldn't go to, like I literally just, felt like I couldn't go to any of my classes. Um, there was one class where I literally just didn't step foot into the class because I just felt like everyone would be staring at me. I felt like I was alienated from my the CS college community and I just, it just felt like an overwhelming amount of pressure uh, and shame um, because of the semester prior, like failing all of my classes. So, my first semester of junior college, I actually dropped out of school for that semester. Um, and I think it was the best thing I could have done for myself. Um, I knew that I couldn't continue that semester. Like, there were so many emotions that I had to unpack. I think one of my greatest regrets was not going to a psychologist to help me unpack all of these things. Maybe it was depression, maybe it was burnout. The two kind of like look pretty similar. There was, I remember there was a long period of time where I literally just could not get out of bed um, to go to my classes. None of my friends knew about this except for my roommate because I would still go to, and when I say friends, I mean the friends that I made during freshman year of college and then also the friends I kept in touch with um, from high school. None of my friends knew about this because um, I would still go to, you know, functions for my friends, but I never went to a lot of my classes and things like that. So, like, the reason why my roommate knows about it was because, like, she always physically saw me there in my bed, just kind of, like, not going to class. That, so, right, we're back on the uh, semester off of college. I think what I came to realize was that I really, one, loved programming. Two, that I belong there. And three, I needed to just, you know, cut off ties with people that were not helping me positively progress through my experience. Um, so I did that and everything became much more positive where I just, you know, kept a distance, put my head down, did what I need to do, um, and just made friends online with people who understood uh, my perspective in my situation. Um, through that online group, actually, I made some of the best friends in this industry that I still, to this day, keep in touch with. You know, whenever I go to San Francisco, I like make sure to go visit my friends. Some of them are also scattered in New York. They're just scattered everywhere, to be honest. What I wanted to say is that you are completely qualified to be in this major, be in this industry, and completely succeed. Um, I guess I'll tell you about some of my accomplishments throughout 
uh, college that I feel really proud about to show you that you can do it too. So I ended up having three software engineering internships, um, two of the summers, or sorry, three summers worth of software engineering internships. Two of the summers I had a blast at um, Behance slash Adobe and uh, I learned so much there and that really boosted my confidence in terms of you know, being able to stick in this industry. Um, I started a, a personal blog where I write technical blog posts, which you should totally do by the way because having an online presence is super helpful. Um, I'm so proud of this online community that I started. Um, they are so amazing and continue to support young women uh, in college entering this industry. Imposter syndrome is a thing. You are qualified to do what you're doing. I also think that it does a disservice to women to kind of have these women in tech marketing campaigns where these women are, you know, they do everything from, you know, being an amazing leader from to having amazing programming abilities and then they also do all these side things like they you know are a fashion designer they like have all this extra time to create these extra products or they're like CEO of whatever company um, and I I think that that is so amazing we need more role models to look up to for women in our industry of all races, um, of all ability, of all you know sexual orientation. Um, but I think something I would really encourage and like to see in the future is to see you know average women lifted up as well, um, or people that have just this one niche like passion. Maybe it's. Um, like they're just really passionate about front-end design or things like that or they're really passionate about containers or container orchestration um, and I think we need more people that we can relate to in the sense that they're not in this higher up management position that um, is kind of like not attainable into maybe like five more years into my career, like I'm just starting out. Um, because it puts in a, an insane amount of pressure for like you to be able to perform to that level. Um, so I think there's definitely a lot more development for our industry. Um, to have women not only join computer science, because that's one aspect, but to also stay in this industry. There's a lot of retention issue, um, and I'm like getting into so many topics, but uh, that I'll definitely dissect in the future. But this is kind of like all off the top of my head of things I've been thinking about recently for imposter syndrome. So I really hope that that helped you out in some way for me to tell you about my experience. Um, and I'll definitely kind of unwrap. Uh, a lot of other topics surrounding, um, you know, non-technical aspects about being a software engineer. And I hope you subscribe. Comment below with your own experience, perhaps, of imposter syndrome, regardless of whether whatever identity you uh, hold within yourself. Um, I would love to hear your experience because I think a lot more of these experiences need to be told because we shouldn't be portraying this indestructible like, you know, person that we like uphold on a pedestal that is just perfect. Um, anyhow, comment below, all my social media is linked below, follow me on Twitter and all that jazz. See you next time, bye!